Welcome to us, the tail end of the program right now. It appears in this country. Every morning we are waking up to, or are waiting for the other shoe to, to drop. If it's not the fake fertilizer, it is the health crisis that now we have the clinical officers as well who are joining the fray. And we have a paralysis in the health sector right now uh, without any happy medium. Questions are being raised regarding the agency and the priority of government in stemming this niggling worry that is affecting the public right now. If it's not health crisis, then it is the accidents on the road. As we reported earlier as well, one student from Chavakali High School has lost his life to gory accident uh, through the overturning of the Easy Coach while they were coming from Kisubu to Nairobi. That is the latest development. So what should we be expecting as far as putting out these fires is concerned. You can see also this very telling editorial cartoon there that we have a police officer, as we were coming from Mister, uh, telling Jesus, who was on a donkey, that be careful. In Kenya, you might die from a road accident other than crucifixion, right? That was Jesus being, of course, admonished there by a police officer. So we continue press with the conversation and we just want to hear, so what do we expect, uh, Otina Molo? It was on your side, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's something I wanted to, to say. Yes. The issue of heckling, I need to make a, come, a comeback on it because it's been discussed. Me, I'm surprised that colleagues uh, seated here can actually endorse heckling, you know? and cloth it in the name of free uh, expression of uh, freedom of speech, demonstration, quote article 37. You know, we, we are in this business. Today it is you who is being heckled. Tomorrow it is me. The next day it is the other one. Tomorrow it is your presidential candidate. The next day it is my presidential candidate. Tomorrow it will be your governor candidate. The next day it's my governor candidate. So let's not be dishonest. In fact, if you read Article 37, it talks about an armed, peaceful demonstration. Present a petition to a public authority. This, this is something that, that we all know. Why I'm saying this is that the law bites both sides. And I'm going to urge all of us to, to remember that the same thing you're doing today will be done against you tomorrow. So what is the way forward? The way forward is to have respect for each other. If, if you have a different opinion, don't come to my, to my rally. Yeah, go to another rally. Don't come to disrupt because it takes effort, money, time to organize that function. Why is it that we coexist, Muslim, Christians, Christians of different denominations, uh, you know, people of different, uh, you know, people just go and organize their own thing. Nobody comes to heckle. So I, I wanted to use this public forum and talk to Kenyans. It doesn't earn you any marks to go to a meeting of farmers and start disrupting it, to go to a meeting of a different political opinion and disrupt it, to go to a church meeting that doesn't hold your opinion and disrupt it. Then we say it's Article 37. I think that is the wrong message we are sending, especially if it is said by political leaders. It is a wrong message we are saying. Let's just respect each other. If you are having your meeting, let me respect you. Then I organize my meeting to say my different opinion. And then, particularly for this thing of the president, in particular, I want to say local politics. When a member of parliament is trying to be a governor, so he organizes a heckling session. When a senator and a governor are having issues and the president is in the midst of it, Honorable uh, His Excellency Deputy President Gashagwa has urged us many times that please let us not uh, descend the presidency into local politics. And I hope that message will go through. And that is the truth. Because in a stronghold area like Bomet, I don't think uh, they were, they were, I wasn't there, but they were not definitely heckling the president. The opposition would have us believe differently, mm -hmm. but that is not true. Now, so these two people who have been uh, arrested, yeah. under what law are we charging them? Disruption of no, public if you, order? Yeah, if you, if you disrupt public order, definitely there's something you're doing that is not right. I mean, if, if I'm having a crusade and you come in there uh, throwing words and I'm preaching, 
I, it is within my right to ask the police to protect me. So if there's no difference when I'm having a political meeting, you come to disrupt. It's within my political and civil rights to ask the police to protect me. And I, I hope Kenyans will just get into that. My appeal here is that let us not even involve police in these matters. Let us have a custom of respect. Respect what I'm doing. I respect what you're doing. You don't have to come and show your displeasure. The TVs will follow you if you organize another meeting where you're doing your own thing. You don't have to come to my meeting. So I don't know what they will be charged with, but disrupting and uh, creating public disorder is definitely uh, an offense. But coming to the fertilizer issue that has been mentioned, I'd like to say this one thing, that this fertilizer subsidy program was a government program. We wanted at the very beginning to deal with the cost of production of food because food production and the cost of fuel is the two major factors that push the cost of living high. So we said we will do things differently from the previous administration. Instead of subsidizing consumption, that is, we lie to Kenyans that we are going to pay the millers so that they produce unga at 100 shillings. And then we, we fail to pay the millers, and then the unga doesn't go, or whatever is produced, nobody sees it at that price. We said, no, we will not do that. President Ruto was very clear. He said, let us go and subsidize production, which means let us subsidize the fertilizer prices. So it is our program. It is our brainchild as a new administration that came the other day. We wanted to make sure that if farmers can get these fertilizers at a good price, then they will produce a lot more, which is true. The number of bags of maize went up to 60 million in the last, uh, in the last year. Uh, and so our, our bet actually paid off. So having said that, Kenyans being Kenyans, there are people who would want to sabotage that for personal benefit. There are people who would want to interfere with a program like that. I watched a very sad short video clip uh, circulating in social media where a lady was complaining, this is what I bought from NCBP, and this is my receipt, and this is not a correct fertilizer. Uh, and so she was making her, her protests uh, known that there's a problem here. So from where I stand, I think, we should not sacrifice a whole government program because of trying to save one or two individuals. For me, I take the, op the, the opportunity to actually urge the president to take a very firm stand on this matter. You cannot cheat, you know, the hustlers who are our producers, those who are feeding us. Here in Nairobi, most of us, uh, we don't have shambas, we don't have whatever, we, we just depend on what comes. So if those people are working so hard, and we, we as a government have come up with a fertilizer subsidy program, and someone is sabotaging, for me, I would, I would just say, President should take a very firm stand on this matter. Heads must rule. For me, that is not negotiable. A proper investigation is carried out, those who are found culpable, it is suppliers, it is officers in the government, it is uh, procurement procedures, the whole lot. There are so many people, Kenyans, who have their heart at the right place, who can help us, help the farmers, make this program a success. So for me, this issue of fertilizer, me, when I saw that clip, I felt so bad, because I think there are people within ourselves who are sabotaging us. So, so we should agree, be merciless. in agreement with us, Mio, that uh, the we should, be merciless. should resign? Not, not Is that the, part of not the CS? Which one For me, I'm, 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 no, I'm not saying the CS and the PS and the everybody who is involved in this sabotage, you know. But okay. what, what, where I will want proper investigations carried out, Every person who is found culpable, who was involved in this process of frustrating this program, they must take the bow. I wanted to ask you then, in, in light of that, why isn't there any transparency coming from Kenya Kwanzaa in regard to also the fertilizer that came from Russia? Do we know how many bags of fertilizer that came from Russia? So that we know 
at least there was goodwill from other jurisdictions to support the, the fertilizer program that you are talking about. Yeah. And we know of what subsidy also that the government has come in. So that we know where is the government coming in with the subsidy that you're talking about the production and where is the fertilizer that came from other good wishes inclusive of Russia that was free. So that it is not all now uh, made up and we with no. the fake fertilizer, we know this was a German fertilizer that came. No, We've no. never gotten that information from from the government so that no. we know at what cost of subsidy also came from Kenya Kwanzaa and what is free from other jurisdictions as well. Now you uh, see uh, this is what happens in politics, Tibal. If there's something good I'm doing. I will look for anything and everything to poke holes into it. Wait, I finish. Let I finish my argument. We announce a subsidy for fertilizer, okay? And as we talk now, the prices have gone down, okay? From 7,000 to 2,500, okay? And farmers really harvested, and they did very well. That's weird. Now, wait, wait, I finish. No, wait, I finish. Let I finish. The fact of the matter is, that program has been very successful. Okay. So, what do we do? Because the government is, is earning points. People will want to sabotage us. So they will create a story. Oh, these are not in fact uh, free, these are, these are, this is not government subsidy, this is free fertilizer from Russia. This is free fertilizer from Ukraine. Someone will create a story about it. But it's, it's, wait, it's, I finish. it's your owners uh, to try and... No, wait, I finish the ball. Clarify. The, the, point, the point of the matter is that the subsidy has succeeded, and that's why we had a bumper harvest, okay? Now, any person who knows that this has gained Kenya Kwanzaa attraction with farmers, they have started this sabotage thing. First, they started that story of, I don't know if it was from Ukraine or Russia or whatever, that's a story that started a long time ago, so that they discredit, oh, it is not a subsidy program, but the government actually, subsidized, because if it is actually the, the, the fertilizer from Ukraine or whatever that was free, then we shouldn't be having it now, you know? We shouldn't, we should, the prices shouldn't be low now because it, it maybe got finished very quickly. What I'm trying to say is that let us not go into nitty picking this thing. The thing is, this program succeeded, farmers are happy, even Tana River farmers, my own farmers from my own county, they are being able to receive, you know, subsidized, uh, you know, fertilizer from cereals produce board, which is something that never used to happen. It is successful, but I'm disappointed that within this success, some people are doing something wrong. So those criminal elements, they must be wiped up after proper investigation is done. That is where I am. Right, Thank so you. We, we had around 34,000 fertilizer, 34,000 tons of fertilizer coming from from Russia. One also of the entity that has been flagged is in this particular scandal is the Kenya National Trading Corporation. Uh, we don't know why this particular agency has been resuscitated, given life again after being a moribund entity for the longest time. And see, we have edible oils, which also was a fake substandard edible oil that even Kenya Bureau of Standards said it cannot be in the public uh, you know, d domain right now because it's a health hazard at the end of the day. I don't know, they turned around again and gave it certification. I don't know what really transpired behind the scenes as well after they decried and said this is not uh, consumable. Uh, so I want to just ask Otino Molo to just give us this indication. Uh, you forget even about the sugar. And the, sh the contaminated, the contaminated yes. sugar <laughs> that was removed from the the got downs came to Thika and found its way to the market and that's the end of that story. So there are many scandals. The problem, let me speak on three things. First um, is the headlines in the standards. Big si root of big silence as healthcare <coughs> system collapses. <coughs> that's not the only issue. There's the health system that is now completely collapsed. There's the fertilizer uh, story uh, that we can clearly see stones and other things <laughs> being sold as fertilizer in properly packed bags. There is the question of the bandits who are raiding, wreaking havoc. Just over the weekend, uh, an MCA was killed and the leaders were there complaining. 
There is the question of corruption, where for the first time now our corruption index has hit another high. Since this regime came in, now you need more than double what you required in 2022. And then there are the, the, the incessant accidents, even just this morning there have been two. You know, uh, the Chavakali boys and there's another one I think around Salama mm -hmm. on the way to, to Mombasa. There are many crises that would require focus and even the president to talk about. But because of what I would call misplaced priorities, the things that are being spoken about and the things that are being attended to are not things that are dear to Kenyans. They would rather, led by the president, be talking about the housing tax and how much now they are going, they've collected and they're going to collect. They'd rather be attending the, uh, the WRC safari rally in Naivasha, you know, complete with the, you know, pictures and conversations uh, around that. They would rather, the president would rather be doing the campaigns, you know, uh, doing those whistle stop, uh, rooftop campaigns in all sorts of places as if we are in an election year again. So I think the problem is misplaced priorities, okay? They would rather be talking about the new positions for chief administrative secretaries, each of whom are going to cost Kenyans now about two million every month and without a limit. Uh, when, as I said in Parliament, just 50 positions for CAS would be enough to absorb virtually all the interns who've been out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one of the reasons for the strike. So it's a question of misplaced priorities. And the bottom line is that it is all part of the same cartel. Last week I predicted here that even by this week we'll be coming back here and no one will have been arrested on this fertilizer uh, scam. No one has been arrested. Instead, now, <laughs> the leadership of Kenya Kwanzaa has joined us in lamentation. You had, uh, you know, the chief, uh, the prime cabinet secretary, Musali Mudavadi, also now complaining that why are you not arresting the cartels? You just need to track, uh, you know. You had now the leader of my major majority in the Senate, my friend uh, Cheruyot, complaining that if the IG cannot work, he should be sacked. You had uh, Mithika Linturi complaining about cartels. You had Nakumicha complaining about the CB, uh, the CBA had been signed in 2017. So they they also joining joining us in the you know in this lamentation. First of all, there is nothing. And uh, Senator Tabitha, do not mislead Kenyans that oh there are few people you know who are in cartels who want to you know paint Kenya Kwanza bad. If there are cartels, they you are cartels. They can't be anybody else because no one else outside the cartels of Kenya Kwanzaa would get any contract to supply anything. This is a government of shareholders and it must be one of the few shareholders who got the contracts to supply this, uh, you know, this uh, fake fertilizer. By now, the, all these stories of saying, oh, those with fake fertilizer, bring them, I don't know. There is nothing to investigate. It mm -hmm. is very simple. Who are the people given the contract to supply which areas? And who are they in terms of names? Don't tell us that there are some shadowy figures, cartels. Get those people, parade them, take them to court. Then we would know mm -hmm. that there's action. Secondly, in all these crises, and I agree that we should have seen people resigning. You can't have a crisis, a country with this fundamental crisis and everyone is sitting pretty. The president is not talking about it. The CSS, the PSS, they're all sitting pretty. No one is resigning. What one expects is that if one cannot resign and they can't do the job, then the person who gave them the job should act, and that is the president. And not, nothing stops the president from acting and cracking the whip. But they are not doing it because it's... It's all business as usual. All these things that the Kenyans are suffering from, for them, they don't see the issue on it. And that is the reason why I agree with Senator Kongo Mogeni. Because there's so much crisis and no one is acting, there's general discontent among Kenyans. And that discontent translates itself to where, even when the president goes somewhere, for the first time in the history of this country, people now have the courage to jeer, you know, because of that discontent. Now, discontent 
cannot be criminal. And let me start by agreeing with Senator Mungatana that I think it's generally good manners. If you don't want to hear what somebody is saying, just don't go there. But if you go and you start throwing stones and all that, it's not good manners. But you see, Senator Mungatana, the problem here is this. These people go because they're being paid to go. <laughs> if, if you don't go, then you don't get the money. <laughs> but having gone there, once they were paid, <laughs> then <laughs> their own conscience takes the better of them. And they then jeer. Now, you have a right to cheer and a right to jeer. There's nothing criminal about it. It may be bad manners, but it is not criminal. And Senator Mutinda, there is nothing like being charged, you know, um, with the, you know, under the penal code with, with such a matter like causing a disturbance. In law, to be charged with causing a disturbance, the courts have said that it must be more than mere emotional upset or annoyance. There must be some physical violence. So you cannot charge somebody who, when you go and you are speaking, they do tar away, you know. <laughs> it may hurt your emotions that they've rejected you, but there's no disturbance there, you know. And that cannot be criminal. Lastly now, let's talk about uh, the static law miscellaneous amendment uh, that I think you are talking about. First of all, that piece of legislation passed. Yeah, the one that I think you had mentioned about, the one that uh, sets an ad advisory board for the Attorney General. Yes. It, it came before us in the Justice Committee. We discussed it. We were in agreement with the amendment uh, as proposed by the Attorney General, and we unanimously uh, you know, uh, put a report which went to the floor, and again, <laughs> the floor of the National Assembly agreed with us, and that legislation was passed. I think it's pending assent by the President. Now, the reason it has come uh, forth so much is because of the protestations by the chair of the Public Service Commission, mm -hmm. uh, who's saying uh, it should not uh, be so. Even at the time, uh, the Public Service Commission came before us and made their representations, but we were not in agreement with them. The foundation of this matter is this. First, under Article 152 of the Constitution, it creates the office of president, deputy president, the attorney general, and the 22 cabinet secretaries. So the foundation is that the constitution gives a certain distinction between the, attorney, the office of the attorney general and other cabinet secretaries. And that therefore you cannot necessarily treat all of them together. In fact, the constitution goes on in Article 156 to now give the details in terms of the operations of the Office of the Attorney General, something that is not done about the other Cabinet Secretary. So the first point that the PSC makes, with which we were not in agreement, is that the Office of the Attorney General must be treated like all other offices of Cabinet Secretaries, and that if they gain any sort of independence in terms of recruitment, <laughs> then all Cabinet Secretaries will make the same argument, which is not supported by Article 152 and Article 156. Number two, in 2012, Parliament passed the Office of the Attorney General Act. And in doing so, Parliament went further than the Constitution. And in Section 12, Parliament essentially ring fenced the Office of the Attorney General. So that, for example, while the President can dismiss any Cabinet Secretary any time, even for no reason, when it comes to the Office of the Attorney General under Section 12 of the Act, there must be a good foundation, including gross misconduct and other things that are stated there. And I believe Parliament did that in its wisdom because of the nature of the role of the Attorney General, which brings me to the third point. The Attorney General is the chief government advisor. But in the work the Attorney General does, although the AG is part of the general government uh, structure, it's almost expected as if the AG's office must pull itself back, especially for it to give independent advice to government. And part of the reason, therefore, that the subsequent that attorney generals have faced is the fact that all employees of the AG's office are, must be employed through the Public Service Commission. 
and to a, an, an extent, therefore, the AG as AG does not have proper control even of those officers, does not even have control of who is to be recruited, when they are to be recruited, what are the terms. And the result is that almost half the members of staff of the AGs over the last 10 years have actually left the office and have gone to other offices, whether it's the DPP, whether it's other independent commissions, so that although he's supposed, they, they are supposed to be throughout the country, they are very diminished because of the terms, because they are just being treated like other members of the public service. And you know these are all lawyers. So if the pay is not good, then they leave. So part of the argument the Attorney General made is that it is important to have an advisory board, yeah, which will be in charge. It's not the AG to be in charge, but the board to be in charge. Now, I think it makes sense because the board even has not just the AG, it even has representation in the legal sector, including the Law Society of Kenya. And I think that makes sense. The PSC's argument is one that fails because part of the first problem with the Public Service Commission is that although it's supposed to be an independent commission, in the last few years it has become more executive than the executive itself. The PSC? Yes, the Public Service Commission. Okay? So that, and you can track this. Even appointments that are supposed to be made, you know, by PSC advertising, shortlisting, doing public interviews and recommending who's to be appointed, you'll find all of them have almost insistently been done uh, through the office of the president and then the rubber stamp. So it has diminished their independence. Even, and the last example, just uh, uh, two weeks ago, when we were debating the government, national government amendment laws, and the office of the head of public service was introduced, which I opposed, and of course it passed. I was actually trying to protect the public service commission, because in my interpretation, you can't have a public service commission which as a commission should be the head of all public officers. Then you have another individual who alone is called head of public service. Surprisingly, the PSC itself did not even support me on that one. So they have not acted in their own best interest. And therefore, I think that um, this whole thing about uh, the debate it's about trying to make sure that uh, it's not assented to. But I think there's not merit in uh, that argument. So, uh, Okongo Bugeni, also you're in favor of disbanding Public Service Commission with, if this bill sells through and Not disbanding. Uh -huh. Let's be very clear. Yeah, yeah. What so, the bill does is to say there'll be an advisory board, just like with the office of the DPP, there's an advisory board. There'll be an advisory board which will then be responsible for hiring and recommending even promotion of those who work in the office of the Attorney General. Only that. Only that. The okay. Public it's Service good. Commission remains with all its powers unaffected. So what is the realm of reason uh, if we have this advisory? Is it that uh, Public Service Commission is not functioning fully as it should? You know, the, <clears throat> the spirit behind creating a Public Service Commission... It's not independent. Was, uh, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm getting to, was to create a body that... Uh, is uh, not uh, serving the government of the day, but is professional and uh, picking people in this, uh, I mean, public servants in the public sector that uh, are to serve Kenyans and not necessarily the regime of the day. Number two, it was to give them some form of uh, independence so that uh, they are not acting under the control of the government of the day. But as uh, my colleague, uh, Honorable Tienda Mola, has, has, has just stated this morning, what we have seen in the past is a situation where the public service is used more as a board to rubber stamp the choices of the executive. You know, some interviews have actually been bordering on, on, on a comedy, like uh, the interview for cabinet administrative secretaries. You know, people are... I think they were done in a record, agenda only, if I remember, three days. Yes. And uh, candidates were being interviewed for two minutes. <laughs> some were not interviewed. Yeah. You know, and, and at some point, uh, you know, the executive directed them to re-advertise because they are candidates the executive wanted who had not been uh, 
put in the, in the, in the initial list of shortlisting. So the exercise was reopened to enable the people that uh, the executive wanted to reapply and be shortlisted. So that far, I think there have been a big letdown to, to the country. They have not uh, exhibited the independence that was uh, expected of them under the new constitution. That's why uh, there is that attempt to now go back to a model that brings in stakeholders from bodies that are perceived uh, to be away from the control of the executive. Like when you say one of the panelists in that interview with the, the president of Law Society of Kenya, the perception from Kenyans is that uh, a president of Law Society of Kenya will Can not be under the control. I'm sorry to butt in. I think, uh, or you stop being fidgety a bit. I think your mic today is very temperamental. I don't know. Just, yeah, if you may just uh, hold on. Don't fidget, fidget. Uh, Ah, okay. <laughs> you be still. Okay, okay. okay. I, I, hope it's, I, hope, I hope it's okay now. Uh -huh. I think yeah, it's rubbing on your cord or something. Yes. Okay, continue. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's the spirit. It's it's a response. Um, it's a response from Kenyans to deal with the, the, the perception that public service commission is under the is too much under the control of the executive as as you as Otendo Mola has told you when you come to some important positions like uh, the DPP we resolve to a panel and not public service commission where you get uh, bodies like KOTU picking a nominee bodies like KSCC picking a nominee uh, bodies like Law Society of Kenya, more or less like what we want to do for IEBC. So it's something that has uh, been tried. It has worked in some occasions well, at times not. But it's, it's all maybe a wake-up call to the Public Service Commission to reassert itself and be more independent, more professional. That was the whole uh, spirit and purpose behind creating a Public Service Commission with commissioners. Uh, who don't have uh, the control of the executive. I've not read the bill, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say much uh, on, on the content, but in terms of spirit, I think that is the, 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 the intention uh, behind it. Now, uh, Dibala, I don't know if it allow me to say something about this fertilizer scandal. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've listened to my colleagues, uh, including Senator, um, Senator Mungatana, saying this is a creation, we are trying to create a story. That there are people who are out to sabotage uh, the government of the day. Se Senator Mutinda here says, uh, these are people who, who want to portray the KK regime in bad light. But you know, the, the question I'm asking, we are in opposition. The government is in office to provide services to ensure that uh, the goods that are supplied to Kenyans are of good quality, to ensure that our farmers are not duped, uh, you know, by give, being given sacks of stores in the name of, actually packaged bags <laughs> with stones as fertilizer. I mean, it's not our business as stones opposition. From uh, we don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> we don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, if, if you go to functioning democracies, this is something that should actually call for the resignation of the government of the day. Because you can't come here as government and raise up your hands and say there are people who are out to sabotage us. That's why you are in office, that's why you have all the machinery to ensure that if there are any criminal elements, you have the intelligence, you have the DCI, you have the police force, you have everything. You, can't, you cannot come here, raise up your hands and say, People are creating stories who are being sabotaged. Even when a credible body like the Catholic Church has come out, issued a statement, and called for some action from government, it has called for resignation of certain government officials. It's, it's not something that we should uh, you know, take lightly. This borders on food security of a country. If you give uh, stones to farmers as fertilizer, and they end up planting using those stones. It means we are not going to have a bump harvest in the next uh, harvesting season. That's a big threat to our uh, food security. It's not something that we should take lightly. So me, I urge my colleagues, if the government of the day is not able to manage this kind of uh, crisis and the many other crises, including the health crisis, you should fold up, resign, and go. That's what that's what is expected of.
no way. a government that is unable to govern. But if they don't, you know, we are now three years to 2027. If they don't, these references we are making here, including what Senator Mugatana is talking about, you know, people who should not uh, exchange with their president. I, I saw it even during the football match between AFC Leopards and uh, Shabana, you know. People shouting at the president, selling away well, toilet affordable housing. It, it's a reflection on what's happening in society. And in fact, Kenyans are just sending warning signs. You know, if you don't do anything, you will see what that spirit, you remember the 2002 spirit mm -hmm. in the country, that wave. You. you will see that wave. And, and when you reach there, you'll just be packing your bags uh, to, go, uh, to go home. You saw how KK reacted when they, they wanted to remove the IBC commissioners. They moved with speed, brought a motion in parliament, and impeached those commissioners. What stops them? They are here. They have the tyranny of numbers in parliament. If government is not part of this scandal, Bibal, why haven't we seen a motion in parliament to deal with some of these CSs who are involved in these scandals? Robbing poor people, poor farmers. That should tell you that the government is part and parcel of this scandal. They have guys with high connections in government who are beneficiaries of this scandal. Otherwise, I, 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 I expected the KK government to use their numerical strength in parliament to deal with some of these characters, uh, but nothing is, is happening because there is somebody somewhere in government who is a beneficiary thank from you. this fertilizer scandal. Right, thank you. Finally, I want to say, Paul, to this Chavakali student uh, who, who has just lost uh, uh, his life in, in this road accident this morning. It's unfortunate, Dibal, that uh, we continue uh, losing the lives of many, many innocent Kenyans through our road uh, accidents year in, year out. And I hope, you know, the, the CS in charge and the government can do something. We Thank were you. in Rwanda the other day, and you'll be surprised, many of the insurance companies that are shifting base from Kenya to Rwanda are making huge profits because accidents are very rare in, in Rwanda because speed limits are observed. There's a lot of discipline in, in, in our roads, uh, in, in the roads in Rwanda, unlike in, in Kenya, where the police are there to collect bribes. They don't enforce speed limits, et, et cetera. That's a wake up call and I hope something can be done Indeed. so that we don't see innocent, productive lives being lost. lost through road accidents. Indeed. Indeed. Tabitha, uh, yes, you want to react on the, the PSC uh, briefly or maybe uh, rejoin on that as we are also considering our closing remarks? Um, uh, I, I, let, me, let me say I have not looked at the bill, uh, honestly, mm. but uh, from uh, the sentiments that I've had from uh, my, my colleagues in terms of uh, the Public Service Commission works in favor of the executive. It's uh, just completely out of order and uh, very misleading because uh, we, we have Kenyans from all walks of uh, life, you know, different regions and uh, covering across uh, Kenya. And so it, they, I would urge them to try and, uh, you know, be fair and desist negating so much by the executive and uh, tr try and uh, appreciate also on what the executive does. Yes, there might be issues here and there uh, uh, as far as uh, the institution is concerned or the com commission is concerned, but that should not be blamed entirely to uh, the executive. Just uh, on, the, on the same issue of uh, fertilizer, you know, it's so quite misleading that uh, when the opposition tries to, you know, it sits back and looks at now, wh where do we, you know, push the government? Where do we try and negate it uh, all the time? We are coming out and saying, you know, uh, uh, this, this issue should not be happening. And with time, we believe that these people will be brought to book. We've stated that. We've said that. We don't need the president coming out and addressing each and every issue. He has an executive that is in place, so they need to be given time. I've had uh, Senator Mugeni ask, like, uh, why has this, why has this issue for fake fertilizer not been in a motion been brought? We have majority. I've said here 
that the Committee of Agriculture led by one of our senators, Senator Murango, is on it, is on top of it. And uh, we are looking forward to have this report so that uh, we also don't have people, I mean, these same lawyers who are, actually today I'm privileged to sit with three lawyers, uh, and apparently they're the same ones now who are waiting and go and defend the same Oops. cartels, the same crooks that when they are, they, are, they are brought to book, actually we should be asking them, are you waiting for them to be brought and then you run and start offering the same services, not looking at uh, uh, where we are coming uh, from. And President Ruto cannot be uh, on the front line supporting food security by subsidizing the fertilizer and still the opposition trying to claim that the same crooks have been brought by the same government. It is completely wrong. Uh, uh, so, I, I mean, let us give it time. Right now, you know, there's nothing much to negate the government because a lot of uh, uh, successes have been uh, seen. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, progresses that, uh, that have been done. Can we talk about them? Can we appreciate them from the, the, the cost of uh, fuel going down? Uh, the fertilizer also, uh, we've seen the, the positive that have been there. The unga has gone down. Uh, um, free visa. There's a lot of positivity. Thank so you. we should try and focus. And also my condolences to the uh, young uh, generation that uh, has been uh, lost. I want also to urge the, 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 the Ministry of uh, I mean Transport through NTSA to try and uh, put uh, more measures so as to reduce these Thank issues you. that are happening. It's quite. And lastly, on my final remarks, as much as we to keep on talking of Article 37 Dibal, but there are two, two words, two English words that do not really pronounce themselves, especially when we hear the Article 37 being used by the opposition, and that is the, uh, the, the peacefulness and the unarmedness of the people who are supposed to protest. They should tell their people, if you need to protest, yes, Article 37 allows you, but peacefully and unarmed. Thank you. Because earlier we've seen that those two words are not being adhered to. Thank you, thank you very much. Dancer Mugatana, you closing remarks as well? Yes. My closing uh, remarks. Yeah, briefly. Are that um, Kenyans should start looking at opposition for who they are. Uh, you know, they try to paint the most negative picture about oh, there's a health crisis, oh, there is this fertilizer, oh, the, the government is in, uh, you know, so therefore we should resign. No, I'm just from Pan African Parliament session. Kenya is highly regarded. You know, we are being used as an example that we have been able to control the food prices within our own country. Uh, we have also managed to control the issues of uh, petrol and the cost of fuel. We have introduced digital economy in this nation and created thousands of jobs for the youth, you know? The mining sector in Kenya has been opened for the first time since independence. Blue economy right now, and I'm talking as a man from the coast, so many people, the fishermen and the young people, beach management units that never used to have work, mm -hmm. now they have facilities Thank to you. go into the deep oceans. They are doing something. This economy called Kenya, the head of state has just been given the position that Kagame had, that uh, he's now the chair of the reforms, the institutional reforms. And you, you can you can read on the list that it goes on and on. And no, on, I'm telling you yeah, yeah. that uh, let we us can pick up next week. You know, let us be honest. Sometimes, if we have a health crisis, yes, but let us also tell Kenyans the truth. Thank the you. country is doing better than it was last year when we found it. Thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, uh, let very me just your, your closing message. Very pithy, very short. I think Senator Mungatanda and Senator Tabitha are living in a different country. I was watching the interviews over Easter of Kenyans complaining they could not even travel, uh, so most people just stayed in because of the high cost of living. So when they paint this rosy picture, it, there must be a, two Kenyans, not the one I know. But lastly, there's this article in The Nation, I think by Dr. Nelly Bosire, is Kenya a failed state healthcare points to yes. I want to say, that Kenya is fast becoming a failed state. If you look at the health crisis, if you look at the farmers' crisis, whether it's taxation or fertilizer, if you look at insecurity, especially in the rift, if you look at all these issues in terms of the cost of corruption, right to all the counties, we are becoming a failed country. And if the president and this regime don't do something, Thank you. we'll be completely collapsing soon. Right, thank you.
Wakongo mwingine briefly. I want Kenyans to know. Despite what Mkatana is saying here, yeah, Senator Mkatana Thabita. For the first time in 20 years, our life expectancy as Kenya has dropped. For the first time. So despite all these things you are being told, is blue economy fertilizers, the life expectancy of Kenyans has dropped two years after the older regime took office. For the first time in 20 years, Kenyans should be worried. Thank you. If they are looking for a regime that, that will create a healthy nation, Uda is not the regime. Thank you. Thank you. Right, let's leave it at that. Uh, gentlemen, I really appreciate and lady, uh, your contribution this morning. And uh, we hope, of course, uh, the policymakers are listening to what uh, has been aired. And happy medium also can be sought out as far as uh, the settlement on the health crisis is concerned as well. Heads should roll as far as also fertilizer scandal is concerned. Also, the niggling worry in our roads regarding uh, transport and uh, the carnage that is happening currently, that also should be addressed expeditiously. Thank you very much for your valid company. You've been watching CSA Fiesta here on Morning Prime. Let's do this next week.